We are 350 days away from the opening ceremony of the Tokyo Olympics. Tonight in Kansas City, America's best gymnasts take a significant step along that path. The 2019 U.S. Gymnastics Championships already underway inside the Sprint Center. The men started things last night, and now the women begin their quest. And oh, by the way, the greatest of all time is in the building. Simone Biles, the superstar of Rio, with an eye on Tokyo, plans on being even better than ever as she hopes to surge to a sixth national all-around title. We welcome you to the Team USA Champion Series presented by Xfinity. Tonight, it's the U.S. Gymnastics Championships. Crowd still filing in here. Downtown Kansas City inside the Sprint Center. A buzz in the building as there always is because Simone Biles is here and looking for her sixth national championship. The four golds in Rio, five-time medalist overall there. Stepped away, came back, won this last year, and now looking to go back to back once again and maybe even do some things that we've never seen before. Thrilled to have you along, Terry Gannon alongside Nastia Lukin and Tim Daggett, the Olympic champions. And Nastia, I know just as a spectator, being in attendance, watching Simone Biles every time she's out here, I feel lucky. How about as an all-around gold medalist from the Olympics? What goes through your head when you watch her? Well, pretty much the same. When I'm watching her, I know I'm watching the greatest gymnast of all time. So it's truly a privilege, a privilege to watch history in the making. And tonight, she is doing skills that nobody in the entire world is doing. And we will see two brand new ones here tonight. So very exciting. Yeah, I am so excited. You know, Simone was so dominant three years ago in Rio. She took some time off, came back, and was even better than she was before. It is history-making stuff tonight as S Simone debuts two more skills that will once again bear her name, the Biles. Yeah, it's pretty incredible, Tim and Nastia, the fact that you come back, you know how good you're, you're kind of recognized as the greatest of all time, and it's, it's a kind of assumed, and yet not intent on staying where you are, because where you are probably would win another gold medal. <laughs> not probably, it would. It, it, it absolutely would, but that's what is so cool when we got to talk to her, you know, all throughout this year is, what is it that keeps you going? What is it that keeps you motivated? And she said she wants to be better than she's ever been. Every single day she tries to be better, and that's why we are going to see these incredible routines but these two skills that we keep talking about just hold on to your seats nobody <laughs> in the entire world can not just perform them but the way that she does them is it, it makes it look so easy gorgeous absolutely spectacular the first one will be on the floor exercise a triple twisting double back she'll do a double double off the beam both of these skills nobody has ever even thought i'm gonna do that in my routine not I'm, even a thought no i don't think so I don't think if they if they did it was during a dream <laughs> five time US champ 13 through 16 stepped away came back won it last year so the most ever in the modern era and now looking for number six interesting to hear her talk coming in about how nervous she gets not still, maybe more than ever. She talked about anxiety now as opposed to early in her career. Well, the, the pressure and the expectations. And, and obviously, she puts a lot of that on herself, but she knows the expectations from so many others. You know, she walks into a building here, an arena like this, and she does even just a warm-up turn, and the crowd goes wild. So here we go. Night one of two for the women. Sunday night wraps it up. But you've got a 15-year-old who is about ready on beam from Overland Park, Kansas, just about 20 minutes south of here, and they are well aware of that <laughs> in this building. Leanne Wong, who we saw at the American Cup, she was sensational. She won the American Cup against some big names. Absolutely, and it was a little bit shocking, I think, even for her. She did it in a big way. Her last event was floor exercise. They went for broke added two skills to the routine that she had never competed before. And as a first year senior competitor, took home one of the biggest titles in gymnastics.
three in a row right here. Beautiful. And something that you'll see all night long from Ryan is the beautiful, gorgeous lines, the execution, the artistry. And you know, her entire team, Great American, or Gage as they go by, really has a reputation for that, Nastia. You know, just the elegance, beautiful lines, perfectly locked knees, great toes. And really, so far, no signs of nerves. It's sometimes not as easy to start on the... Oh, oh boy! And I probably just jinxed so her. So you're the one who's going to jinx tonight, <laughs> not Tim. But, you know, starting on the balance beam isn't necessarily the easiest event to start when your nerves are extremely high. Hometown, you know, all three of the gauge athletes said it doesn't really affect them too much being in their hometown. I know for me it did a little bit when I competed at my hometown nationals. Really nice dismount there, triple twist. And she has had a very busy schedule with her coach Al Fong there. This is where she had a little bit of a problem, a great fight just to stay on the beam and didn't panic, kept calm. And the thing I really liked is her next skill was an acrobatic skill and she just rocked it. Didn't let her affect her at all. So we get the numbers for the 15 year old, the 2018 US Junior All Around Champ in a moment. Over to vault right now and the 18 year old, Morgan Hurd, who's the 2017 World All Around Champ. Had some problems with this vault as of late. That one's pretty good, though. A little bit of technical issues. We saw it both at the Classic, which was a couple of weeks ago, and then she also competed at the Pan American Games in Lima, Peru. But take a look, what the judges are really looking for, obviously the amplitude off of the vault, but you want your hips to be completely open all the way around, especially on that landing. So a little bit of a pipe down, but as you mentioned, Tim, a lot better than we have seen this year from Morgan on this vault. Yeah, we've seen her really bend her elbows, especially that one to the right of your screen. She dealt with that a little bit better on that, and because of that, she was able to get a better rebound and I think keep a better body position in the air. Speaking of rebound, there's the number 14.45. This, she's looking for a bit of a rebound after six at the U.S. Classic and then not making it to the individual all-around final at the Pan American Games. Two athletes per country rule keeping her out there, but still, all right, green is good, yellow in the middle, red you want to avoid, guys. You absolutely do. You know, she didn't really have that bad of a competition at the Pan Ams. She was fourth in the all-around, but because two Americans yeah. finished ahead of her, she was two per country and knocked out. Grace McCallum now, 2018 oh, world champ, as part of the Grace team, McCallum. but big in terms of confidence for her. Just 16 years of age from Minnesota. Same ball we just saw. Very nice, a little bit cleaner than I would say we just saw from Morgan, and probably a better landing on that as well. She was so shocked to make the world championship team. She said, if you had said that I would be on that team a year ago, I would have said you were crazy. Good form in the air. Legs a little bit crossed, that's a tenth of a point. Small slide back. You see her close to that line. If you go over the line, it is out of bounds and you receive what's called a neutral deduction. But great opening of the hips all the way through till the landing. Probably will score a little bit higher than Morgan for that ball. And she's going to be tough. I'll tell you what, um, we had a chance to talk with her, and we asked her what her goals were for this competition. She said, I want to be second. Yeah, went right to it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 14.7, the and you number. Know, I, I love that because <laughs> so many times, both on the men and the women's side, a lot of times they say, oh, I just want to hit all my routines. And, and on the women's side, four for four, the men's <laughs> six for six. Four for four, six yeah. for six. Yeah, Same thing. Heard it a few times. Just under 14, Leanne Wong, for that initial number. But that second place she's hoping for, that's first place because she's living in an era of the greatest of all time, Simone Biles. So Jordan Childs, the 18-year-old from Vancouver, Washington, 
Transit Spring, Texas. Ron Landy's, Cecile Landy, the coaches for Simone Biles, also her coaches, the all-around silver medalist in 2017 at this event, and last year a silver medal in vault at Nationals. And you know, in 2017, silver medal in the all-around. She was left off the world team. She didn't agree with that. She thought she had done certainly enough. stronger Jordan than we just saw a few weeks ago at that classic competition Tim as you mentioned was just not quite in her top form that just was as good so as much I better. have ever seen her do the landings were fantastic and you might have noticed she did use a mat on her opening pass that is allowed in a competition like this no deduction so we get the score for Jordan Childs. And yes, she is named after Michael Jordan. <laughs> the college basketball experience in Hall of Fame right next door. I got to work in little hoops in the show. <laughs> Riley McCusker getting set on beam. The 18-year-old from New Jersey. Who had a third place finish in the all-around at the 2018 U.S. Championships. And you mentioned the recent events. Second at the Classic and second at the Pan Am Games in the all-around. And really... Riley had the gold medal in the all-around. She just had some errors in the individual all-around finals. If she had done what she's capable of, she would have dethroned Ellie Black from Canada, who had went back-to-back all-around champion at the Pan Am Games. Now in the second ball, Jones of Good fight there. New combination for her this year. Shanice Jones of Future Gymnastics Academy on vault. Balance beam is so critical for the connections, trying to do multiple skills in a row. I'll tell you what, she looks like a completely different gymnast to me this year. Was very disappointed in her performance at the 2018 Worlds, but she looks like a veteran now. Great start for Riley. And Tim, you know, she even told us she feels like a completely different gymnast than she did a year ago. It's a transformation that you just don't see all that often in elite gymnastics. Her first major international competition was devastating the American Cup a couple of years ago. But wow. And a second and a third on beam at the national championships the last couple of seasons. So Jordan Childs, green, 13.75 for that routine we saw a moment ago. Simone Biles just getting ready, though, on floor. We'll see her in history as well as we continue.
here at the U.S. Gymnastics Championships from Kansas City. The Team USA Champion Series is brought to you by Xfinity, proud partner of Team USA. Get the speed, coverage, and control you need with Xfinity X5. By Progressive, making it easy to bundle your home and car insurance. And by Team USA Fund. Every donation matters. Show your support for Team USA. Visit TeamUSAFund.org to make a gift today. And warm here in Kansas City. Very nice evening, though. Rather than Husker, 14.5, the number for balance beam. You get a green on, be on beam, and you are doing some work out there. And you got it out of the way. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> nice. So it's Simone Biles who is getting ready for the floor exercise, and this is a routine. Guys, I'm going to take a look at what took place in <laughs> practice here in Kansas City. Absolutely astounding. Only female gymnast to ever do this. This is three twists, two flips, and it is like butter for her. Did you ever think you see that? No. <laughs> Well, I, actually, you know what? I take that back because when she performs the double twisting double back, it is so easy for her. I feel like we all kind of joked, like, throw in another twist and <laughs> really weren't sure we were going to see it. But she, she did admit that there are days when she doubts herself and says, I, what if I can't twist? What if I can't do this? <laughs> she does. Simone, you can. You can. <laughs> you always can. Absolutely. And we're going to see it right off the bat. It is her opening tumbling pass. So we are just going to let you watch history. And you know what, the, the scary thing is, is I don't think she had to upgrade hardly at all from Rio till now to still be the greatest in the world. The reason she's able to push herself is she competes with only one person, nobody else, Simone Biles. Going aggressive to try to stick that landing. I'll tell you, you know what? I would say that that basically guarantees that Simone Biles no. will do this again. No, no, yeah, I'm okay. In no, night no, no. two. Okay? I'm just pissed off already. I know because Pretty much said it all. <laughs> She did, and you know, when we talked to her before the competition, she said she was for sure going to do it in night one because she would have more energy, and that is exactly what happened here. Kind of tried to go for the landing. Her shoulders were a little bit in front, but not enough I just to really she, fall. I think she was trying to be too perfect, trying to stick it cold. I've seen her do it multiple times here in Kansas City, and none have looked like that. All of them have been near perfection. And you know, I bet she's probably never, not just here in Kansas City, never even at home, has done what she did right here. But okay, first of all, let's also not take away from the fact of how amazing that was in the air. Yes, sure, it wasn't, <laughs> exactly. it wasn't exactly the best landing that we have seen. And I would 
be shocked if she didn't do, as you mentioned, Tim, if she didn't do it again. And at the end of that routine, a double twisting, double somersault, but she is her biggest critic and is tougher on herself than anybody else is to her. She's not upset, she is mad. So she's not waiting, but we will wait for her score here and get it to you as soon as we have it. But right now over to Michaela Skinner, the 22-year-old from Arizona, who was fourth in the all-around at the Olympic trials back in 2016, named as an alternate for the Rio Games, went to college, went to the University of Utah, NCAA, all-around runner-up twice, and now back to try at the elite level to make it to the Olympics in Tokyo. And I'll tell you, when we saw her at the U.S. Classic a, a couple, three weeks ago, I, I truly was blown away at how far she, could, she had come in such a short amount of time. It was only eight weeks of her really deciding that she was going to go for this. She kind of puttered out on floor and her last pass had to do a very easy, easy tumbling run she has changed the construction of the routine. I think it's a really good decision for her. And she said she, her endurance is much better. She said because it has been so hot in Arizona, she thinks that's helped her. She also has a huge first tumbling run, a double twisting, double somersault, but she'll do it with her body board straight. She told us earlier this week she felt better, she felt stronger, more confident, and that is exactly what we saw right away from the first event. Do you Good think job. she has a chance to make the team? Oh, absolutely. You know, I think where seven, seven. she's strong on this event, and then we'll see coming up next on the vault, right. she has two very strong events that the team could really use her. Absolutely. That was really hard gymnastics right there. Double twisting, double layout, front summy to a full in, double, double. Really, really hard. That is a stern look on the face of Simone Biles still, because look at the number for the floor exercise. Still the highest score. Look at the maximum score, 16.7. She lost 2.35 out of that 10.0 execution score when she bobbled in the beginning and rebounded off her feet onto her hands. That's a full point of deductions. I don't think we'll ever see it again either. Came off to the side. The first question that was asked, are you okay? And she sternly said, yes, I'm fine. Obviously just upset because with a chance to do something no one has done, you got to believe we're going to see that, though. This is the last time she's going to go after that. We continue here in Kansas City in a moment. Back in Kansas City for night one of the Women's National Championship. As you know, USA Gymnastics has spent much of the last three years dealing with the fallout from a sexual abuse scandal centered around former team doctor Larry Nasser. Last week, Congress released a report that found the FBI, the United States Olympic Committee, USA Gymnastics, and Michigan State University all failed, quote, 
to protect amateur athletes and other young women and girls from sexual abuse. The report's release reverberated here in Kansas City. Andrea Joyce has more. Well, Terry, after Congress released that report, Simone Biles tweeted that USA Gymnastics and the USA, USOC had, quote, failed us and, quote, continue to fail us. And here in Kansas City, she was asked about her thoughts after training on Wednesday. I don't know. I don't mean to cry, but it's just, it's hard coming here for an organization and having had them failed us so many times. And we we had won gold. We've done everything that they asked us for, even when we didn't want to. And they couldn't do one damn job. You had one job. You literally had one job, and you couldn't protect us. So you hear the uh, frustration and the anger. I just spoke to USA Gymnastics President Lily Lee Young a few minutes ago, and she knows, acknowledges that the organization still has a lot of work to do, but she told me that one of her top priorities is to make sure that Simone and all of the other gymnasts know that she is listening to them and that she wants them to have a voice moving forward. Meantime, when we sat down with Simone this week, she talked about using that voice, something that she said she's still learning to do, and it's clear that this is a responsibility that she does not take lightly but we have also seen over the years that Simone has this amazing ability to compartmentalize a word that she's used in the past so once she's out on the competition floor she is here to compete and that is precisely where her focus lies stay with us the second rotation with Simone on vault is coming up next as we continue our coverage of the 2019 U.S. Gymnastics Championships. Back to remind you, you can download the Team USA app for up-to-the-minute news and exclusive behind-the-scenes coverage of your favorite athletes on their road to Tokyo. Visit the Google Play Store and iTunes to download the Team USA app today. So one rotation in for the women here on the opening night for them. Low score in terms of Simone Biles and what we've come to expect right now as Sheriff Sixth. But that will change. Grace McCallum on top. Charlie Jones into second place. And it'll change because of that ball. I was say, right, right into your kitchen. Yes, absolutely. But a determined, I think, Simone Biles after not doing what she wanted to do on floor, don't you think? Absolutely. But, you know, when you look at the big picture, there's two days of competition. The all-around standing today is going to be carried over to tomorrow. So it's two days combined. And looking at the difficulty that she has, just looking at that score, she has over two and a half points of an advantage over everybody else. So, yes, she had a fall that was worth a point, maybe a little bit over a point, but it's still nothing to really worry about. <laughs> no panic whatsoever. Simone Biles is, even with the fall, she's on track to win her sixth all-around title here. She starts that much ahead of the rest of the field. And, and the way she starts ahead, it's called the difficulty component of her score. So she does more gymnastics than everybody else by about two and a half points that are competing here today. Let's talk about the others, though, because this is all a part of the run up to Tokyo. Morgan Hertz certainly in the mix. There'll be four athletes for the team. And then you got apparatus, individual, Jake Carey, one of those trying to get one of those spots. But the four, a big part of this week is putting your name up there to have a great shot at that. Well, the Olympic team isn't going to be decided at the Olympic trials next year. You know, that selection process really is starting here today at the national championships, the world championships are going to be at the beginning of October. So every single competition counts. What they are looking for is not necessarily the results when they where they place, but the consistency throughout this year and throughout next year as well. Morgan Hurd, uneven bars. Let's go. Big routine for Morgan. Tricky combination right here. Beautiful. She won the U.S. Classic on the uneven bars. She'll do a full pirouette right here, right into the double. Get some extra points for that. Oh. <laughs> really tried to go for the stick there. Yeah, it was very good. Excellent, actually, but I don't know if those judges are going to give that a stick. She really needs to show complete control 
at the conclusion of the landing. She really just had such a breakout here in 2017, winning that world all around title. Was great last year and has struggled a little bit this year, just not quite feeling 100%, but so far here in Kansas City, two events down, two great routines for Morgan. Yeah, elbow she, injury and the surgery is yes. a part of that too. Yeah, a bunch of them. She's had three different elbow surgeries to clear it all out. That's but it. she said that she thinks people have already written her off and think that she's not good enough to be on that world or Olympic team. She says that motivates her and she wants to prove them wrong. She's got to impress this guy right here, Tom Forster. He is the new Marta Caroli on the women's side of USA Gymnastics. He alone doesn't have the selection. There are two other members, one of them an athlete representative, Kyla Williams, who is a world champion herself. He leads a pretty good team. He leads a pretty deep team. I mean, there's Simone Biles <laughs> with all the headlines, but you've got athletes here who are going to be the favorite once again for the gold medal to keep that string going. And if you could send more than four. If you could send more than four, I think that that team would be second to Team A from the, USA. The next four. After yes, that. <laughs> absolutely. 14.4, the number from Morgan Hurd, but that's how good it is. But there's pressure in that, too. In, in leading that team. Well, there's there's pressure in leading the team, and of course, for all of these athletes, there are so many incredible women that are trying to make a four-person team. Personally, don't agree with the rule change. You know, 1996, the Magnificent Seven, and then I competed, it was six people. Then it was the, you know, the Fierce Five, the Final, final five, five, and now we're down to four. And yeah, it's terrible, it's terrible. Gymnastics enthusiasts across the planet don't like it. And thankfully, 2020 will be the only time that happens. 2024, they will go back to the five-person team. And we wait. <laughs> for the judges. That's got to be excruciating. This is probably the worst part. I mean, it's one thing <laughs> for the audience kind of to wait, but if you are an athlete waiting and waiting. So Riley McCusker, the 18 year old from New Jersey, ready to go. Goes up. I don't know if that was one foot or two. If that's two, three tenths, one, one tenth of a point. First tumbling pass, of course, she went out of bounds, but the landings just weren't as precise as we have seen from Riley this season. But as we kind of mentioned, they've had a long competition season already, just competed at the Pan American Games, uh, really got home days before they had to come right here to the national championships. Yeah. So shocked they're all actually competing. So that's your six for Simone Biles. You don't see that off the yeah. medal chain. She's over on ball, just about ready to go. The hardest vault being done today, but we will see it from other gymnasts. Really good. 
ginormous power, but she's not gonna be happy that she took a big hop back and then one more step. A lot of times, you know, she does have that little slide on the landing, but she doesn't take two steps. Just so much power though. The Biles 2 is this vault that she debuted in Doha at the World Championships with an extra half turn. Could have done that extra half, no problem here. Really, look at that, the air that she gets off of that table on the hips and the power that she has on this vault. And this one that she's gonna do is called the Aminar. And Michaela Maroney and Simone Biles, they are in one class. They are the best that's ever been on vault. Now, the second ball for Simone Biles. Big number, though, 15.3. If she does this like she did in warm-ups, it's going to be astounding. Now, Just the explodes off the table. There you go, one step only. But <laughs> as amazing as these two balls are, the only thing she can think about right now is still that first tumbling pass that she had on the floor. You can tell yeah, the expression exactly. hasn't changed on her face since then. So here is that Aminar. Back handspring onto the table, laid out two and a half twist, and it is just so easy for her. I think she could do not just another half turn, she could do another full turn at the end of that. Why does she do two vaults? Because at the Worlds or the Olympic Games, to win an individual medal, you've got to do two different vaults. The first vault that she did will be the one that counts towards her all around score here. Everybody's thinking about positioning themselves. As we look at the number of McCusker, 13.25, and so in, in the yellow, but you think a, a Simone Miles is actually thinking about step by step what's going to happen at the Olympics already? Well, I, I think she is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when we talk to her, and you know, that's obviously what she said is that's why I'm here. I, it, it's about the Olympics for me. But already in her head, going through everything. Keep it here on fault. Michaela Skinner will be next. Gonna do that same vault that we just saw from Simone, the Aminar. Actually pretty good. Doesn't have the same oomph that Simone has. Doesn't get the same rebound height off of the table. But I'll tell you what, she does two of the most difficult vaults being done in the world today. She's kind of twisting right into the floor, which, you know, she is able to deal with it, but it can be catastrophic if you're twisting and then lock those knees, but this should get a very good score. Said recently at the Classic when she came back, I really didn't know if I could do any of this anymore at this level, feeling much better now, much more confident now, having been through it at least. Well, in college too, you know, you, they were training a little bit less than on the elite level. She was training once a day, and that's typically what she does when she's back home in Arizona. But of course, here at the national championships and the Olympic games or any kind of training camp, it's two a day trainings. Yes. Pretty much seven hours a day, so it, it's, it's a lot. Crazy, and you know what it comes down to? The NCAA, they have different rules. It's out of a 10. Now, the second ball for Pretty good score there. But they do about one third the amount of gymnastics that they do in elite gymnastics, literally. Gonna do the same vault that we saw Simone do on her first one. This one's called a chen. Not bad, but that one actually was a little closer to how she did it in. 2016, and a lot of people were uber cri critical of it, saying that she doesn't get support on both hands well. She's been doing it a little bit better than that here. You got it! Monsoon! Two, two gigantic balls, though. The USA, I think, has Come the three on, best vaulters in the world right now. She Come being on, one of them, on. Simone Biles is the best, and Jade Carey is just as com competitive. 
Speaking of, there you go, Jade Carey, 14th place after the first rotation, the 19-year-old from Phoenix, and going a different route in terms of trying to make the Olympics, not the four-person team, but an event specialist, and you can do that now. The Apparatus World Cup Series, new qualification, and she's in the midst of that. And she leads on both vaulting and right here, floor exercise. Wow, that was jam-packed as well. Even with that little fumble at the end, I say that if she does one more routine like that at a World Cup, that she will guarantee a spot to go to Tokyo yeah. in 2020. I'd like to be a part of the team, but kept everything open to make it in terms of the apparatus. But take a look at this opening pass. What makes it so difficult to Flips, two twists, but in a completely stretched, laid out body position. Not many people in the world can do that. That is the best I have ever seen her do that. Coach Dad. That is Brian, her dad, yep. And genuine smiles all the way around. Jade Carey, serious business for Simone Biles so far. Kansas City, smile and a wave. <laughs> yep, celebrating the number. Oh, 14.3. Yeah, that's that's pretty harsh. I certainly lost the most on the dismount, but has that huge difficulty score. Meanwhile, Kara Aker, the 16-year-old from Green Valley, Missouri, just about oh, a half hour from here or so, part of that contingent, and there are a lot of fans out here cheering for the athletes who train in that local gym gauge great american gymnastics express looking for some redemption here though started on her best event balance beam where she is world class and struggling
And that was a great performance, putting the problems on balance beam behind her. She was the Pan American Games champion. She won the U.S. Classic on balance beam. That's supposed to be impossible in the era of Simone Biles. Silver on floor at the Pan Am Games as well. It's really improved tumbling. You know, very impressed with what she's been able to pull off here. Two and a half twists and rebounds right into that front layout with a full, great form, great landings. And you know, of course, not only was that a great routine, but mentally to recover from her balance beam routine where she is just absolutely stunning and gorgeous and, and world championship medal worthy. You saw a shot of Al Fong there, the head coach at Gage. And they have three legitimate contenders for the world championships and potentially even the Olympic Games. Leanne Wong, Aaliyah Finnegan, Gage is stacked right now. Building up the stands, too. Look at all the shirts. Blue Springs, Missouri, about 16 miles from here. Ask Armini Baratien, Alphonse's wife and co-coach at Gage, how many people would be coming that are affiliated with Gage. She said all of them. <laughs> she was a former Soviet gymnast, a tremendous athlete and competitor in her own right. Just about one of the most intense and focused people I've ever met. <laughs> what do you think of the number? 1365. You know, in my opinion, that was that was pretty harsh. Very low Mommy. in the execution because that is something that we will see both from Leanne right here, from Kara, all of the gauge athletes as we talked about. Their execution and form is just beautiful normally. Yeah, I don't get that. Really tough to start here. Arabian double front in the pipe position. That was a very, very big error. She's actually supposed to do three and a half twist. Kind of popped out of it. Only did a triple. gigantic mistake. That was a triple full again, which you cannot repeat an element. I thought she would downgrade it and do only a double twist. Very hurtful. Sophomore at Blue Valley High School in Overland Park. Got better than a 4.0 Leanne Wong as we continue. Night one for the women. The Team USA Champion Series is brought to you by Xfinity, proud partner of Team USA. Get the speed, coverage, and control you need with Xfinity X5. And by TeamUSAShop.com, where every purchase helps support your Team USA athletes. Well, earlier this year, something took place in this sport that brought sheer joy to everyone who saw it, and plenty did. Kaitlyn Ohashi's floor routine was viewed more than 100 million times across the internet and earned a perfect 10 for the UCLA senior. Her recently retired legendary coach joined Andrea earlier tonight here in Kansas City.
I'm with Valerie Condos Field, affectionately known as Miss Val. 29 years at UCLA, a million memories, but we want to talk about that night. Caitlin Ohashi's Perfect 10. What was that like to be there and be part of that? You know, you just know when someone is in the zone and every little part of that routine, it just came to life. And she was absolutely in another planet out there performing. It was so exciting. So you have a dance background, so you have a special eye toward the floor routines, but in general here at Nationals, who are you looking forward to seeing? You know, I'm really looking forward to the diversity that we've got, and I feel like we've got such an eclectic group to, to select our world team and our Olympic team from. I'm really excited about that aspect of it. Obviously, Simone, you know, truly the GOAT. She's the Michael Phelps of gymnastics for us. But the other athletes that come forth and what they bring to artistic gymnastics is really an exciting field. And one of those athletes here is a collegiate gymnast, Michaela Skinner, who's taking a year off trying for an Olympic berth. You have experience in this. How hard is that? What's the special challenge about making that leap back to elite? It's really hard, but you, I've just been so enamored with Michaela. Uh, her three years in college, she's like this racehorse. And you could just see she wasn't done with, with competing big time skills. She still did big, big skills in college, but she's got so much more. And I can guarantee you, every college coach here is rooting for her to make that team. All right, Val, thank you so much. Congratulations on your spectacular career. Thank and thanks you. for being with us. Thank you. Yeah, four-time national coach of the year, seven national championships with the Bruins. I live in L.A. There were billboards with Ohashi's image all over the city. But gee, that was something. All right, Simone Biles as we roll on here. Night one for the women in Kansas City. Back with the standings after the second rotation. Familiar name up there after what she did on vault. Simone Biles with the lead. The Morgan Heard, Jordan Childs alongside. And Kina Skinner, Suni Lee, the top five with a couple more rotations left here. Over to vault. And Riley McCusker, who is currently in ninth after that second rotation. That's kind of shocking. Yeah. To be perfectly honest has to really get it together here. This is not her strongest event, but she is much improved. Will not do the two and a half, only the double full. Oh, and that was excellent for Riley McCusker. Gonna get a jump in the standings with the number here on ball too. Yeah. And as you mentioned, she's not as difficult as ball as we just saw from Simone Biles, but take a look at the execution. This is really where Riley shines. Gets great height and a little bit of a cross feet. Went for that stick. <laughs> but you know, but those, that was good. Those two steps, they were less than a meter. So each one of them, they're, they're not the three tenths deduction variety. That's only a tenth for each one of them. That's about as good as I've ever seen her do. And that was really close to a perfect stick. She has what I believe is her best event coming up, the uneven bars. And am champion on that. Can you hear her coach? They were watching it on the jump of screen up top and she said, oh, that was a good fault. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah, there you see at the 0.95 execution deduction. I would say a little bit more critical than I anticipated. I was waiting for and, that. And That's really the third all, time. All of the events for right. her all night long. Don't really agree with that. Uneven bars now. And Simone Biles in the lead after two rotations. This is her most improved event. Now with her first up two balls. For Grace Just to connect Evans. this oh, element yeah. right up to the high bar. Very tricky combination here now. And then back down to low. Very well done. Certainly was a little bit nervy looking. But this is a new addition post Rio for her. Double twisting, double somersault, huge air. Got a little bit hung up. 
Sometimes, as she's about to let go of the bar, she opens her chest. Her chest actually comes I almost forward. Right on my dome, but it's fine. Okay. You <laughs> just did it! Her chest that comes... Is a piece of shit. <laughs> ...comes forward instead of going backwards, which kills her rotation. And so here you see she goes, she's gonna go from the low bar all the way up to the high bar and straight into a release move. So it's the, the two skills are difficult in themselves and then she connects the two and of course gets extra bonus points for that. Very nice transition from high to low here. Another new post Rio skill for Simone. So it's all about backward rotation. So you shouldn't see the chest come forward a little bit like that. And what happens, it gets hung up in the air and she loses rotation. And because she's such a fighter, because she's such a cat in the air, is able to scoot her feet underneath her. But she wants a lot more flip. You see the chest and the hips opening forward. How many people in this arena do you think holding their breath when she leaves that far? <laughs> Just Probably hoping. every single person. Right? Yeah, she is not a happy lady right now. Has really not showed her best of her best gymnastics on any event so far. Her next event is Balance Beam, the place where she's debuting. Maximum score, very high, 16.1, but more deductions than she typically has. She's in the yellow, which is okay, but not great. She can be a lot cleaner than she just showed right there. Two points on the deductions. <laughs> yeah, well. I think the face says it all. That's kind of what we felt in the arena at that point, yeah. So keep it here in fourth after the second rotation. Michaela Skinner. And this is a big challenge for her. She did not compete the uneven bars at the Classic. Is trying to pack in a lot of difficulty that she's not accustomed to. Release right here. We'll also try to do a big combination. So much more difficult than she has done in the past. And she does a full twisting double. She's actually capable of doing a double double there and does it really easily. But that is a major big time win for Michaela Skinner right there. You know, when we talked to her a few days ago, she was just actually hoping to get through that bar routine. Extremely difficult for her, has really always struggled on that event, but as you mentioned, Tim, what a success. <laughs> yeah, definitely had a lot of form issues. It's gonna come into play with the score, but. Over to Vault and Jade Carey, currently in a share of seventh after the second rotation. I believe she's doing the vaults in the same order that Simone did. Half turn on, half turn to the table. Oh! That was really great. Really, really good. Sometimes her legs can get a little bit flaily from the board to the table, but that one looked much cleaner to me. Same vault that Simone did for the first one. As I said, it's called a chung. Half turn onto the board, half turn onto the table. Laid out somersault, one and a half twist, and just an itsy bitsy step. What deduction for an itsy bitsy? One tenth. <laughs> okay. It, it, and I mean, just really good. I think really the best one that we have seen, at least for sure, here in Kansas City, possibly even uh, all season. For her, for her. Yes, but Simone, even even with the two steps for Simone, it, it, it's going to get a higher score. But Jade is actually bringing back this second vault right here. We haven't seen it from her in quite some time, but a big number. See that 15, that is gigantic in today's world. So here's the Aminar. She's only been doing a double twist recently. 
had a knee injury and said that vaulting was the most difficult on it and the run really hurt her. Feeling much better now though. Wow. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Team USA, if there wasn't a two per country rule, if they were all three, Skinner, this young lady, Biles, at the World Championships, that's one, two, three on vault for Team USA. With a floor team like she did today in those two vaults, she is well on her way to Tokyo next year. Some deductions. What about those deductions, 2.6, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, I think they got that right. But if you looked at the maximum score, she has improved tremendously. All right, Jordan. Jordan Childs now well positioned in third after the two rotations. Ron Bars. She actually has a bunch of releases as well. Her transition right there, very nicely done. Very unusual in women's gymnastics to see that combination. Another release. Pretty darn good. Since 2017, really hasn't looked as good. Was second in the all-around at those USA's and another fabulous routine for Jordan Child. It was earlier this year, she moved from her hometown in Washington to Spring, Texas, job, training World Champion Center. Same coaches, obviously, as Simone Biles. There you go. And the hug from the greatest of all time. So Jane Carey got a hug from her dad and her coach. Remember the first score, it goes to the all around. Look at that second ball as we go to break. Best for Kerry, second the overall right now. As you know, next summer, the world's best athletes come together on the world's biggest stage. The Olympic Games return live from Tokyo on the networks of NBC. All racing to Tokyo, and that's our home away from home, guys. Ariake Gymnastics Center set to be completed in 2019, October. 10,000 seats, first new Olympic gymnastics venue since 2008 in Beijing, and it's all recyclable material. They're going to take it down in 2030. I love it. Looks like home. Yeah. I'm good with that. <laughs> it will be, for sure. Yeah. All right, we continue here at the U.S. Gymnastics Championships as they try to pave that road to Tokyo and the Olympics. Suni Lee, the 16-year-old from St. Paul, Minnesota. Still recovering from a slight fracture of her left leg. And you see she kind of favors that landing, does kind of a telemark landing, ski jumping landing, put one foot in front of the other. You know, this, of course, isn't her strongest event, but the next event, <laughs> stay tuned. Yeah, not quite, as you said, 100%. 13.55 on the uneven bars for Jordan Childs. Fourth overall at the moment as we send it over to Andrea. Hey, Terry, it's not exactly keeping up with the Kardashians, but gymnastics might have a brand new reality TV star. Morgan Hurd is one of just three gymnasts chosen to participate in an Olympic Channel docu-series called All Around, and that show is going to follow those athletes around for the entire year leading up to the Olympics. Now, Morgan told us that she was really reluctant at first because she's always felt awkward in front of the camera. She called it super strange to have to have to repeat mundane things over and over so that the cameras could get the right angle. But she did admit that when she had to show her emotions, she was very happy with how she did. And with a twinkle in her eye, Terry, she said, Hollywood may be next. <laughs> ah, that's great. <laughs> well, she kind of took the world by storm at the World Championships a couple of seasons ago with the glasses and the smile, and she's embraced 
all of that. Big book reader today is National Book Lovers Day. She was talking all about the books that she brought here to yeah. read during the <laughs> national championships. Every single competition, she, she tells us about a new series. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you'll see, you'll see Morgan do this, the visualization, and, and watch her as she goes through that entire beam routine. She actually talks through every element. And this was those worlds that she came out of nowhere and shocked, I think, herself and the world. Can never take that away. All around champion of the world. And came back, won the all around Browns now, in 2018 as part of the team with Simone Biles. But you know, on this event, she's been very disappointed in herself. Hasn't been able to put together a great routine. Has missed a lot of connections, she says. This is huge right here. Back with a full twist. She wants to connect it into a leap, which I think is a very smart thing to not do. <laughs> really nice. Really throws that, not just head, but her chest back on that ring leap. Having a great day today needs better than a 13.95 to stay in second place. Well, so far this is a gorgeous beam routine. Just the dismount left right here. Gets a really good bounce usually. Double pike. Small hop, but that is a victory for this young lady as well. Hence the sigh as she walks off. You'd expect the number would be good enough to put her into second behind Miles once again. Suni Lee, 13.85 for that vault we saw a few moments ago. So we've completed three rotations of four. Smoke Miles on the beam in the next one. Looking to uh, solidify that lead and looking ahead to night two then in Kansas City and winning another title. Heading into that final rotation, Simone Biles in first place, but look at how close it is. Less than a point separating the top three. Morgan Hurd right there. Jay Carey also there. So an important final rotation coming up. And for Simone Biles, the way she ends this opening night here for the women. Through three rotations, Simone Biles in first place, but you can tell by the look on her face the entire night, not exactly thrilled with her performance so far. She is based, of course, in Spring, Texas, and there have been a number of big names, either from Texas or based there. Kimson Esco back in the early 90s, Charlie Anderson, the all-around champ of the Olympics in 04. Oh, I know that name. <laughs> but not only these, but also many more with an association with Texas. Well, absolutely. Reagan Smith, you know, just competed a few years ago last year. Right she, back of course, Well, she's right there, yep. Um, Reagan Smith, of course, trained at the right Tim. <laughs> trained at Texas Dreams with Kim Zameskel, Dominic Uchiano, so many greats that maybe don't call hometown, you know, in Texas, but they have all trained there as well. Got a question for you as we look to this last rotation. How important is this on beam now for Simone Biles tonight? Pretty important, and I think just for her mentally. You know, it's it's not necessarily the results or how many tenths or points she's gonna win by, but she is planning, as we saw on the floor exercise, the triple twisting double back, she is planning to do a brand new beam dismount. Nobody in the entire world has ever done it, a double twisting double back. And for me, it'll be interesting to see if she is going to perform it here. We watched it in training on the podium, and it was absolutely incredible. I, I think she's gonna do it. And I think that if she pulls it off, it will actually make 95% of the pain that she is still feeling right now emotionally go away. This skill is so hard, that one skill is worth nine 
tenths of a point. She has a jam-packed routine ahead, but that skill will be the very last thing she does, the dismount. Whoa, that was an amazing fight. She, she came out of that squatted leg, held on. This is going to be very interesting because so far tonight she has not done a routine that she's going to be even remotely happy with. This beam routine included. Does she do it? Remember she has two skills already named the vials and the coda points. Potentially two more. You have to land them successfully in a major international competition, though, to earn the name. Here it comes. Two flips, two twists. Never been done in competition. Oh! Wow. <laughs> and you see that smile? That makes everything just a little bit more palatable. The best thing she did tonight was the last thing she has done tonight. That was not just one exclamation mark, but probably five. <laughs> wow. Yep. Absolutely incredible. First person in history to ever perform that skill. So take a look at this. Two back handsprings into this dismount. She does two flips and two twists. So many people cannot even perform this skill on their floor exercise. Just... <laughs> I, I like sh like I've seen it so many times. Watched her do it, and every single time, just as incredible. Look at how high her hips stay. She doesn't drop until basically the last half turn. And the the problem is with a Simone Biles. She is so great. She makes it look not that hard. Nobody in the world can do this. Nobody. It looked pretty hard to me. <laughs> Coming right at you with that angle. <laughs> you see Cecile Landy, Landy, one of her coaches, ecstatic with that. Laurent as well. I'll tell you my favorite moment of the night is that she stood there on the beam right before that. And, and you know in her head, she knows she's going to do it. And it all tonight, how she feels about tonight, all comes down to that. The deductions here, though, 165. Yeah, she had well, wobbles in that routine, but did you see the, the maximum <laughs> yeah, score? Huge max score, but really leading up to that dismount. And again, we're being super picky, but a slight wobble or mistake on a, a, lot, of, a lot of elements. Before that, heading into this rotation, Jade Carey was less than a point out of first place in third. But that will decrease. This is. Jade's weakest event, she has really done a lot. Watch this to improve her difficulty. Oh, a little bit of fight in that handstand. Another big release right here. Called the Bahardwaj, named after UCLA great Mohini. A little bit over on that last handstand. But a very strong routine for Jade Carey. Put together a tremendous all-around performance. 
We'll get the number in a moment. Kayla Skinner ready on beam, her final event of the night. This is tricky for her. She has really struggled with this. Goes past the handstand just like that. Should show a little bit more control. But this is off the charts difficult right here. A back handspring right into a back with a full. Makes it so much more difficult when you tumble into this. Awesome. Alan Lawrence is on. goal at this competition was to make the national team here. In, wow. in a really, really great day of competition for Michaela Skinner. I'll tell you what, there were a lot of doubters for Michaela Skinner that she could come back after three years of college and so quickly be at the top of her game. Those haters, those doubters, please apologize now and admit you were wrong. <laughs> That's an order, orders. by the way, from Tim Daggett. 13.3, number on the bars for Jade Carey as she tries to keep pace with those at the top. Simone Biles, though, want to finish to this opening night. A lot of disappointment tonight, not living up to her own expectations, but how about this? A look at Biles and the Biles once she goes international. Back with a reminder, Simone Biles and the world's best will be in Germany. Continue their journey towards next summer's 2020 Tokyo Olympics, the FIG Gymnastics World Championships coming your way October 8th on NBC, NBCSN, and the Olympic Channel. The number for Michaela Skinner, 13.55. You see that 2.05 deduction out of a 10. Basically, I think they're getting most of those deductions because on her leaps, she doesn't get to 180 degree split, but mission accomplished. And I checked Twitter that all the haters have apologized. <laughs> so you commanded it and they've done it. We're good. Third overall, by the way. What a team. And you think about this man's gonna lead. Tom Forster, the high performance team coordinator. When you think about the history and what the team has been able to do and the gold in Atlanta and then the last two big expectations, but it is deep. It is, and, and to be honest, I think it's even harder of a job now because of a four person team. There is so much talent out there and so many athletes that you really could put on that team in any given scenario. Harder to pick, harder to make the team. Really hard to make the team. And the four that don't get to go could easily put together a team that could be second to Team USA's A team. It's a nice problem to have if you're Tom, though, <laughs> in the US. That's is all part of the process here. And you got the selection camp as well. And you got the world championships, which we just promoted. Suni Lee fifth after rotation number three. And this is her strongest apparatus. And if you got them, buckle up. Fasten those seat belts tight. This is a roller coaster ride from start to finish. You know, and it might be one of my favorite routines after all of Simone's. <laughs> But just all of her release moves. Not only is this entire routine so difficult, but take a look at how high she flies on these release moves. And from low bar to high bar back up, every single element is connected to the next. She's got to just make it to Stuttgart, make it to Tokyo, 
and she is in line for a world or an Olympic medal, without doubt. Very big combination. Great handstand. Another great handstand. A little Into low on that one. Really hard though. It's it's a really risky thing, and that handstand that is going to come back to haunt her. Full twisting double holds on to the landing. Oh, those, the two last pirouetting skills. You have to be dead on in a perfect vertical position. Toes pointing up to the ceiling. She was not. How did you think that quick, huh? Nice. Oh, Smart move. Yeah. Smart move. Great job. Beautiful. Huge release. It's called a new. She's going to do a toe on to a reverse hack. What makes it so hard is she keeps her body stretched, extended, oh my goodness, and then down to low. Look at that, beautiful, like a picture. And here she goes right back up to the high bar, but look at this. A pack salto basically with a full spin. She is something special. But as we mentioned, this pirouette right there, way from the handstand, I admire her for trying to do that. It's very, very difficult to land in a handstand. I think it's too hard, not worth it. Here's that dismount, full twisting, double back. You see her spot the ground. So she can actually do a routine that's even harder. Yeah. The connections that she has, that we've watched her train, it's so difficult even in training, but especially in competition when your adrenaline is running a little bit high, you're just a tad bit off. You feel a little closer to the bar, further away from the bar, and it's almost better. She, and you heard her coach say, she really was able to think so quickly, and it's that risk reward that we always talk about. Had she gone for the connection, maybe would have missed. Didn't lose any deduction by not connecting it. She just lost a little bit in the difficulty score. Yeah, you heard her coach say it's smart. Yep. Good, good thinking. I mean, you're talking about do, doing that on the fly. Split second decisions that you're making within a routine. It, it, it's very <laughs> great green <laughs> score for her. She's pleased with that. Better than she thought, she said. In the second place, as a matter of fact, overall, as we keep it here in fourth, heading into this rotation, Miley McCusker. And she did not have a good warm up just minutes ago. I saw her come off the bar two different times on release skills. That's actually what cost her the gold medal in the all around at the Pan American Games, a fall on uneven bars. Coming up right here is the really critical sequence. Wants to do three in a row and back up. Awesome. What a fighter. Oh, boy. Wow. And you know what that is? That is getting the really tough stuff out of the way and not staying in the moment, not focusing on what you're doing at that point, because that skill, although it's challenging, it is a no-brainer for Riley McCusker. And you know, it seems oh. like it might be a little bit easier now that you've had 30 seconds to rest, but it's actually so much harder to get back on the bar after a fall. You're exhausted mentally and physically. And just the dismount right here. Well, a good finish, but that's too bad. You know, more than anything, it's just frustrating. As you mentioned, Tim, she got through every single difficult skill. A little bit of tough catch, okay? You know, she, she fell on those reverse X two times in the warm-ups. This is that really wild combination down to the low bar, and then she connects this, and it was a little bit hairy there. I didn't know if she would go, but she did. 
Did your warm up usually match your performance? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't necessarily always as great so, at being able to turn the page, but you know, that's that's what she did a great job of here. So look at this right here, just a giant half and just didn't quite kick over the bar. That tap swing was trying to land in a handstand. So she was doing all the right things, but just a, a teeny bit not enough. Over the floor, and Morgan Hurd in second place, heading into this final rotation. And she thus far has silenced the doubters as well. In this competition at the U.S. Classic was sixth. Did not advance to the all-around finals. Two Americans ahead of her, both McCusker. And Aker. Changing up the floor routine a little bit at the Classic. She did a double layout. She'll be doing a double twisting, double back. Right here from the beginning, here it is. to do a layout with two twists, only did a half turn. We've seen a lot of nerves tonight. Oh! And that was not even close. was a rough one. It started great. She added in the double-double and then completely balked on the second pass. Did a double layout in her third pass. I didn't think I, she was going to do that. I didn't and either. I don't know if she did that because she thought she needed more difficulty, but... Yes, and she did it. She He is exactly right. You can't change it midstream like that. Here's that opening tumbling pass. Double twisting, double back. So two flips in the air, two twists. Chest a little bit low, hot back on the landing. And this is what she added in, that double layout. It was not a good choice, not even close, nowhere near enough rotation, and that landing. I'll tell you what, those ankles will be sore for weeks from that. So, you know, Timmy mentioned so many nerves here it, come on. tonight, but let's remember so many of these ladies just competed a few, really last week, actually, <laughs> at the Pan American Games. And it is exhausting. Yeah, I, they competed so many days in a row, came home, had just a few days before they had to travel here. National championships, two more full days of competition. It's a lot. Yeah, and it started with a major competition, the first major U.S. competition of the year for the elites, the U.S. Classic. It was a lot. I thought it was too much. I, I questioned all of the athletes that did it. And she pointed the nerves for the shortcomings at the Pan American Games and said I really felt them more than I thought I would. I mean, this is someone who's won a world championship, an all-around title. Not that, I mean, everybody gets nervous. Simone Biles says she still no. gets anxiety no, out there, but I'll coming be back. home yeah, I'll come back. Mm. And, and 
this is a night where maybe you can't win it, but you can certainly give it away or give away a chance to make a good run on night two at the podium. Well, she has two gigantic errors in that routine, and you see the score devastating. Over three points deducted from 10.0 for the action the execution score. She was in second place after the last rotation, less than a point off the lead. She falls all the way to eighth. And 13-5, number from McCusker. Riley currently in fourth. You saw the hug Grace gave Morgan Hurd a moment ago. I thought this young lady could possibly be second at this competition. Fell on bars and on beam. I was shocked. Well, a much better ending to her day. As you mentioned, Tim, just not the grace that we're used to seeing. Fallen bars, fallen beam. Unfortunately, these scores have to carry over to the next day. I think a lot of these athletes would love to just completely start from zero. Doesn't work that way, does it? No. Well, she was awfully close fourth at the all in the all around at the 2018 U.S. Championship. So we'll see. She was tied for 10th after three rotations as we send it over to Andrea. All right, Terry, a spectacular finish for Simone Biles with the lead. How important, first woman ever to do that beam dismount. How important was that based on what had happened through the night? Yeah, um, tonight was pretty rough. I'm pretty disappointed with the overall, I don't know, with the overall entire meet except for beam. So it's hard ending on beam and I think I finished pretty strong. So I guess that's the one thing I'm happy about, but we'll go into the gym tomorrow and we'll try to fix anything that we need to work on. And hopefully day two, we can come back stronger and it'll be better. So let's go back to the floor. There was so much anticipation for that first tumbling yeah. class in the triple double. Yeah. What happened? I just kind of overdid it. And then, I don't know, it kind of just caught up to me. And I've never done that ever on that pass before. So it really shocked me. Um, so probably try again on Sunday? Yeah, I'm going to try again on Sunday. All right, last question. Tim and Nastia trying to read your mind through the entire competition. Do you want to just tell us what was going through your mind? You looked a little mad. I don't think you want to know. It's just like I was so mad and disappointed with how I did. And, you know, you have to keep the momentum going and going from each event. But it's not easy, especially when I screw up on one of my better events. And I was really excited to do that pass. So. Not good things were going on in here. Not good things. I was very mad. I was very mad. We will see you on Sunday. Yes. See you guys. Thank Thanks, you. Terry. All right, Andrew. So the mind reading was right, <laughs> at least. Uh, it wasn't pretty good. It was pretty obvious, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it wasn't a great stretch to, to go there. Won by almost seven points, six and a half points last year, and a pretty good margin on top right now. Back in a moment. Team USA Champion Series is brought to you by Xfinity, proud partner of Team USA. Get the speed, coverage, and control you need with Xfinity X5. By Nicolo Baltra.
enjoy responsibly. And by Team USA Fund. Every donation matters. Show your support for Team USA. Visit teamusafund.org to make a gift today. So the evening is over here. Night number one, Simone Biles. Look at the margin. 1.75, and the thing that is just unbelievable, that is the worst meet I have ever seen Simone have. And wow. she still won by that. That's a big statement. How about the night of emotions from start to finish for Simone? Well, worst meet or not, of course she's not happy with opening up the competition and her floor routine like that. Also wasn't exactly thrilled with this bar routine, but two skills that no female gymnast in the world has ever performed, and she capped off the night with this iconic <laughs> beam dismount. And that erased the pain, but I think it has somehow seeped back in, as we saw the interview with Andrea. But that's tremendous, folks. Frustration, anxiety, exultation, triumph at the end with that dismount. So a little bit of everything tonight as we look ahead in the final for the women. Tomorrow, Sam McCulloch looking for a sixth national all-around title. The men's U.S. Gymnastics Championships concluding here at 8 Eastern on NBCSN. Simone Biles, rest of the women return Sunday night. Women's competition at 8 o'clock Eastern over on NBC. For Nastia, Tim, Andrea, our entire NBC Sports crew, I'm Terry Gannon. So long for now from Kansas City.